Hello, welcome. Please pause the video, read the problem, and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. Okay, so let's read it. The probability that Gary and Jane have a child with blue eyes, okay, is 0.25. Okay, so the probability that they will have blue eyes is 0.25. All right, got that. The probability that they have a child with blonde hair is 0.5. Okay, so the probability that I have blonde hair, try blonde, equals 0.5. The probability that they, ha that they have a child with both blue and blonde is 0.125. So, uh, okay, so again in black here. The probability that they have blue and, that's the end symbol, blonde, blue eyes and blonde hair is 0 0.125. Given this information, the events, blue eyes and blonde hair, are what? Independent, dependent, independent, or mutually exclusive. All right, so uh, independent events, right? If the idea is that in general, we could say that for an independent event, the probability of A times the probability of B happening equals the probability of A and B. Well, if they're dependent, that wouldn't be true. And if they're mutually exclusive, so dependent, I mean, a time, probability of A times probability of B does not equal the intersection. If they're mutually exclusive, it's just two events that can't happen simultaneously, and that's when you have the probability of A and B at the same time equaling zero. So for, in other words, uh, if I said to you, what's the probability that you flip a coin and get a head and a tail? In other words, you get a head and a tail at the same time. That's not possible. It can only be that one or the other happens, not both. So they're intersection. There's no way to get both a head and a tail. Those are mutually exclusive events. But these are not mutually exclusive because this is not equal to zero. It's possible to have blue eyes and blonde hair. Furthermore, uh, if we multiply 0 0.5 times 0.25, I don't want to think of this as fractions. It's just easier for my brain. A half, let's call that the probability of having blonde hair, times a fourth, probably having blue eyes, is one-eighth. And one-eighth does equal 0.125. Therefore, they are independent. And that's choice two right here. Now, if you don't like solving it that way, another nice way to think about it usually is based on this idea that the probability of B given A equals the probability of B if and only if, or when you could say, um, A and B are independent. A and B are independent. So. Here, um, we have blonde and blue. So I, I would say, what's the probability that, um, so to calculate, excuse me, to calculate this, B given A. In our case, it would be um, blue eyes, let's say, given that you're blonde. Now, by definition, that has to equal the probability of that you have blue eyes and blonde hair divided by the probability that you're blonde. Where am I getting this definition from? It goes right back to the beginning here we have for independence, this piece right here. Another way to write this in general for independent or dependent events is to say this, I'll write it down here. The probability of A times the probability of B given A must be equal to the probability of A and B. And that's just saying, all right, well, what's the probability of A? Okay take that probability. What's the probability of B given that A has happened first? Okay, if you know that, you can find it. If not, you can calculate it. If you multiply these two, whether the uh, events are independent or not, you get an intersection. In our case right here, all I've done is say, all right, let's isolate this piece, what they want us to solve. I divided both sides by the probability of A. So I kind of reverse this formula and get this. B given A equals the intersection of A and B or B and A, you can reverse these letters for intersections. And that's the probability, divided by the probability of A. I divided both sides by the probability of A, and I rewrote this statement. And that gave me this right here. Long story short, if you divide the probability of, B, of having blue eyes and blonde hair, that was um, 1 eighth. They give you that, 0. 0.125 is 1 eighth. And if, if you're stuck on that on the calculator, remember, you can do that quickly on the calculator. If you do one, um, 0.125 and hit the math button and go to fraction, it'll give you the corresponding fraction for that decimal. If you take 1 eighth and you divide it by 1 half, 
right? The probability of being a blonde, what do you get? Well, how many halves go into an eighth? Well, to find out, take one eighth and, and times it by two, the reciprocal of one half, and that's a fourth. And that is one fourth, that's the probability of having blue eyes. Now, this might be a longer approach, but what it shows us is the probability of having blue eyes is the same whether you have blonde hair or not. So in this case, this is probably having blue eyes given that you have blonde hair. This is the probability that you have blue eyes, and they're equal, right? They're both a fourth. So the probability of B given A, oh my God, look at my nose, they're messy here, sorry. The probability of B given A equals the probability of B, and that means that A and B are independent. In this case, blue eyes and blonde hair are independent. So I solve that in two ways, but usually those are the most common ways of doing it, and I'm sure there's more. Thank you.